what a beautiful session we had just before this one that we had Gosh, yes. with Dr. Laura Rendon um, expressing some excellent points and issues um, that students from different backgrounds experience. And she provides such hope and positivity and looking at assets that our students have as they are resilient and re overcoming barriers and obstacles to reach their dreams, their family and their community dreams. Mm -hmm. And that all starts at orientation. So it is 945. I am Naomi Grealis. I'm the facilitator for this um, fantastic session. You are more than welcome to send questions, comments in the chat. You will see my name as um, facilitator Naomi. You can send it there. If you like, we are going to get started with introducing our presenters. I'm going to share a very short bio for our two presenters, starting with uh, Ms. Robin Hickson. She is our Dean of en Student Engagement and Retention at MCC. She has co-created employee mentoring program. She has been my mentor and continues to be my mentor. Um, she has facilitated various student leadership projects and revamped the new student orientation. Joining her is Corey Lynch, success navigator at MCC, and he believes in the need for affordable and accessible education. And this dynamic duo will share MCC's Smart Start orientation program at MCC. So please take it away. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our session. I sure hope you enjoy hearing about some of our trials and tribulations as we moved through our orientation journey. These are our objectives today, and I'll just let you read those. Um, but I'll tell you that as we go through these objectives, we will be sending you through a brief journey of in our evolution of NSO at Metro Community College, and then we'll show you some survey results, and then we'll have some uh, aha moments that we experienced, and then we'll have time for questions and answers. So we're gonna get started off with a little bit of history. Um, and I know you all probably know this, you've been to lots of conferences and um, you know that the history of orientation programs dates back as early as Harvard University back in 1636, where they were the first institution to implement a system by which experienced students could help other students in their transition to campus and campus life. Um, and there's been several theory, theorists and you, you're very familiar with them as academic advising and administrative staff. Um, these are two of my favorite quotes. Um, the one by Vincent Tinto here um, that comes from 2015. And um, there's been um, Wes Habley and I know you're all familiar with probably this book, the advising handbook. I don't think you can see it very well there. But this uh, quote here at the bottom is one of my favorite quotes because I think that it really speaks to the heart of what we're trying to do with orientation. Um, and I'll just read it. The goal is to help students feel cared for by the institution. Students who perceive that someone cares about them and that they belong to the school community are more likely to be academically successful than those who do not feel any sense of care by the institution. And that was Jennifer Varner um, in an article um, from 20, 2007 when she was talking about intrusive advising. And although I'm not a huge buy-in for real intrusive advising, I really um, believe that there should be a balancing act um, of intrusive and caring and um, empowerment. So that's a little bit there. Um, okay, so here's another quote, and gee, look, it's a quote from me, <laughs> and the reason I put this quote on here was because back when I started advising um, with Metro in 2001, I started as an academic advisor, um, we had some small group orientations happening at that time, and we didn't really have any particular formalized orientation. What was happening is new students would come in and they would meet with an advisor and we were giving them one-on-one -on -one orientations. And we were, it was probably 
um, really great that we did that because we were developing relationships with the students and we were really proud of what we were doing. And there were some small group orientations for special populations and we were toying with, um, you know, small orientations for special populations and just small groups. But really, this quote that I made probably circa 2007 was my way of putting a positive spin on something that was probably a mediocre situation, okay? So because although we were developing really good relationships with students, it wasn't very practical because we were giving the same long information to every single new student. They were spending an hour or more with new students and our waiting rooms were overflowing and um, you know we were exhausted and just really spent and it wasn't consistent. So if you had an appointment with Morning Robin, you know, you got like a bright eyed, bushy tailed advisor ready to face the day. If you got an appointment with Afternoon Robin, you're going to get someone who's a little bit more worn out and spent, maybe not so happy to talk and talk and talk. So while we were giving students extra care, we were probably spoiling students. In fact, you know, the comment was made that we our customer service was probably maybe too much at that time. Now, I'm sure that advisors today still get exhausted. And I'm sure, especially during peak enrollment, they do. But at least now, because we have an orientation, we're really speaking for that long time with them about them, about issues that are really pertinent to them. And so instead of being that broken record and going through parking pass and all of this stuff with every single new student, um, and answering all those questions all day long, we're really able to tailor our, our visits with students to what their needs are. Right. So because there were orientations happening all over the campus in small pockets, but nothing formalized, we um, decided that we were gonna put together a committee and it was a really timely project and it was an opportunity because there was a Title III grant that was addressing first year experience and so this gave us the opportunity to really fly with what we wanted and really strategize and envision what we wanted to do. So we had a committee that was made up of equal representation from all over the college. We wanted input from navigators and advisors and enrollment services and faculty. And this was our marching orders was to quote, create one consistent orientation across campuses for new incoming students that delivered essential information for a smart start at MCC in a large group format. So we had this committee and they were amazing. I have to tell you, this was one of the funnest, most rewarding projects that I ever was involved in. And it wasn't easy because like I said, we had orientations happening in different places and everybody was very proud of the work that they were doing with orientation. So they almost tried to out orientation each other, like had great ideas over here and great ideas over here. And we really had to start from scratch. Like I had to really coach and say, okay, those are wonderful ideas, um, but we really need to start from square one. We need to decide on content. What is essential need to know information? Who, how are we going to promote? Um, who should we have teams? Should we have a PowerPoint? Should we have what 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 would a face-to-face -face experience be like for students? And how would we get students there? So this was um, this actually took you know months of planning and months of working through issues and back and forth and um, it, it was just an interesting experience. And so this was a goal statement that was created by that committee. Finally, this was really what we honed down. And this was also what we used for our internal program review. So this is what we designed our survey around. So to deliver consistent, relevant information in an efficient face-to-face -face and online format that promotes a smart start. And we had to define that foundation for incoming students to introduce new students to resources, tools, and services that support success in their educational and personal goals, to reduce anxiety and uncertainty, and to create a sense of belonging and connection. So we piloted a few um, you know, small orientations that year 
in the quarter after we started to meet as a committee. And Corey is going to tell you now about how that went. Right. So first of all, it's great to see all of you folks here, um, those that are at Metro. Um, you're uh, maybe familiar with our model, too, with these goals and outcomes. Um, but I did want to just kind of provide at least some context to when we were doing these orientations, who, who was kind of leading these goals and outcomes. Because as Robin had mentioned before, we had a lot of advisors that were kind of doing absolutely everything for everyone. And back in 2017, um, we had um, kind of a new position created at Metro community college at the time called enrollment navigators now called success navigators um, that was really there to maybe take that load off of the advisors so that they can maybe work more on the completion side of students and we as navigators could be that first contact not only as the person that they would have maybe met as a walk-in or as a phone appointment but they would ultimately um, we would also be the ones that they would see at orientation. So here is this kind of second round of getting to know that student also in the wider context of their own. So when we ended up doing that, we had those three goals and outcomes for our orientation pared down to one, introduce students to their tools and resources. And when we were doing this on campus, a lot of that time, that meant actually walking people around um, in the buildings to those different resources, whether that was the writing center or the learning and tutoring center. Where would you go get your ID? Um, we would go get that ID with them. How do I print? Um, so that these are all these kinds of things that they're at least a little bit exposed to before that first day of school. So that for our goal two, we could have a reduction of anxiety. Um, one, they would know many different kinds of people that were already there to help them, um, but they'd also be familiar to know where you could go to find out more information, whether it was, you know, Pat up on the second floor, um, or if it was, you know, an advisor over on the first floor. So um, the third thing that we were going to also do is, is connect the students to the MCC community. So just besides ourselves, we wanted them to meet other students. So what you're kind of seeing here as a picture is like, is the beginning of that main PowerPoint that we ended up creating that was really homogenized, that was used throughout all of the same campuses, um, South Omaha, Elkhorn Valley, and Fort Omaha campus. And um, so our goals really were to say, how do we get them to feel comfortable? How do we get them to feel exposed and to know where they can go for help? So those were those were really the main uh, points we tried to drive home with our orientation process. So I'm so glad that Corey um, was able to give you a little background about the enrollment navigators because we did not have enrollment navigators before 2016 or 2017. So the committee, and then the, the committee had commenced after they were on board, which was kind of a new concept, these enrollment navigators that were like lifeboats, you know, for students. And they were doing amazing work when we just had opened this big new center on campus. Um, it was a big $93 million project that, and, and we wanted to make sure that those enrollment navigators were a little different because we needed something um, to really navigate students as they entered the college. So this was all very timely. And this PowerPoint um, that you're looking at, this front page, this was the third rendition of the PowerPoint because when we started meeting in October and then we piloted our face-to-face -face orientation in the spring, we had a different PowerPoint and we got better. And then we had a different one for summer. And then by the time fall was rolling around, we were really hitting our stride. And we had this PowerPoint, which was really pretty snappy um, we had a, a little expert person on our staff that was able to whip this up, who's very talented. Um, her name is Patty, and she, she um, did that for us, and it was just great. So by the time fall 19 hit, we were so excited. We had our big hurrah, our big event. It was the big ta-da, right? And we had um, 15 sections across all of the largest campuses that we have, the four large campuses. And those sections were facilitated by teams and they had icebreakers and they had, you know, students received ID cards and there were tours and they met resources that were at tables. So like each one had a mini resource fair where students at a certain point could go and walk around and meet the resources. And that was really cool. And um, we had raffle, we had a student panel. So these are pictures, there's Sabrina up here. Um, you know, answering some questions. And this one was done over in our newer facility. 
um, on our Fort campus. And then this is Corey there and he's helping with the student panel and taking questions. We had a, a little mechanism where students could write in, you know, and we would, it would pop up on Corey's phone and he would ask the question of the panel. So, so they got to hear from actual students, which was really great. And I think Jessica now, I'm going to stop share real fast and she's gonna share a little video of that. This is a video we took of um, a face-to-face -face orientation that fall in at our South Omaha campus location. Can you see the video? We can see it. like <laughs> okay my colleague uh, Shanda Clark um, very talented young woman who is really good at videos and she has done many professional videos for many of our engagement projects here at Metro Community College she did that for us so at this point um, in the game you know it had really become institutional and collaborative effort across the college for new students and we also had those subpopulations like our Buffett scholars and our international students and some other subpopulations that would have like mini sessions, like short sessions for their subpopulations and then direct those students to go to the larger broad new student orientation where they all got a consistent um, message and the same information at our four locations. So it was really, you know, we were really hitting our stride and feeling good about things. Um, and then, so fall of uh, 2019, we impacted roughly 25% of new students. We had over 1300 students that fall. And that's a big deal for us. It is, it was meaningful. And I know there's other colleges that are huge, but this was a big deal. We felt like we had really managed this and it was, when we did the internal program review, we later found out that that was at roughly a cost of $5 per person. And we had, um, the reason for the cost was we had got t-shirts and we had gotten a permanent ID card maker that was portable. So students, get, we would send it to the different locations as needed. And then we also um, you know, had some other little raffle prizes and things like that. So $5 per person, I think that's pretty good. We were able to grab, about 100 and, or 1,117 survey responses. So 84% of the people that um, attended our orientation filled out the survey. So that was really wonderful that we were able to do that. Um, can you all see my screen there? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. So we were doing great. And we had created this little infographic and I've got it in my hand and you can see it up here on your screen. So by this point with our pilots and the 1300 that attended in the fall we had over 2000 plus students that showed up and received information for a smart start they met with metro staff and students heard about resources we um felt like the responses were very good and getting that amount of responses was terrific and 94 percent reported feeling more prepared for college after the experiencing their new student orientation. And then in really important was that 95% reported learning about ways to get involved on campus because we know that students who are engaged 
students who identify with the college and form a relationship with the college are going to have a higher chance of success and a higher chance to thrive. And also 75% reported less anxiety after meeting some staff and meeting some students that were going to be with them. And then what happened, Corey? Uh, what did happen, right? Uh, I think we all know. Um, Starting in January 2020, we all started realizing that there's um, a big issue going on in the world and, and COVID started um, unfortunately spreading. And during the peak of our orientation, we, we had to move um, to a different uh, format. And I will say with some premonition, because even before we truly knew about some of these in January and, and even in December, um, a few of us started had already begun shooting some videos with our own in-house video and, and audio team um, to create an orientation that was going to be accessible by anyone, anywhere, at any time. So an online one that was going to have awesome videos and really walk students through. Then March 2020 hit and we absolutely had to get out of campus and no more events or meetings were going to be happening. Um, we all, as we found out, ended up having to make our own desks at home. Um, and so we started developing um, and finalizing um, this online orientation process for our spring start students and our summer students. So the, the slide that um, Robin is showing us right now is, is the end product of what became of that project. Um, we have a beginning speech by our uh, Vice President, Dr. Maria Vasquez, um, and we also had a Spanish um, speaking version as well in that bottom left corner, if you can see. Um, but all of these tabs um, were not only just information, but actually people speaking to um, the students, uh, something that the student could do at a self-paced format. Um, and that in completing this, they actually got their own little certificate. Um, and if you can kind of tell in the very top right corner, there's also this really great resources link that we are able to include in there so that all of the numbers all of the emails that we would put through these videos, they could download this kind of Word document that had all of that information ready to go for them. So while they may have been taking notes and missed something, they could always go back and download all of our resources, contact information for the variety um, of our um, experiences that we have for all the different campuses too. So um, yeah, that, that, that was a really cool uh, experience. We started to debut that. Um, and then we had uh, what, what, uh, well, Robin will show us we had a lot more growth in numbers over that coming um, summer and then into especially this last fall of 2020 where we really excelled and had a lot of people go through that format at that time. Um, so I'll let her kind of talk a little bit more about the numbers um, when it when we get over here to that. But uh, yeah. So if you'll just bear with me for one moment. I am I had I somehow when I tried to go back. Um, it, can you see that now? I, we can, I think it's in a pre presentation mode though. Like we're in a presentation mode. Okay. Um, you can still see the slides though. I think it's all right. Okay. I do apologize. There we go. You can do those numbers if you want. It's not going to let me go back. If I try to go, nope. See, so let me just, um, take tell you that for that online orientation that we had, we had um, 670 um, do it this last fall. And we had in the winter or, or the fall of 2021, we had 212. The 670 um, was from this last fall. We had 670 students view that online orientation. So it was really like taking hold. And um, it was good because we didn't, we couldn't do the face-to-face -face orientations. And then in the spring, we had 236 um, participants. And then um, in the summer of 2021, we had 280 and approximately 32% of brand new students um, that were arriving with zero credits attend were able to participate in our online orientation. So um, I wish you could see this not sure how to get it back. Well, it looks like someone in the chat helped Julie uh, Mullins saying that she did this yesterday in one of her own presentations. So if you okay. click on the display, if you click on the display settings button at the top and end the presenter mode. So do you see in the very top, there's that black bar that says display settings? Um, I don't see that on mine. 
I, I see this on top of the Zoom. Oh, let's see here. You might be able to drag that Zoom thing out of the way too. Well, let's see. Yep, I apologize. Let, let's just go ahead and go through this if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Naomi, do you have the PowerPoint up and ready or handy at all? Because I can stop share and let you you do that. That might get us back to where we need to be. Sure, I don't have rights right now. So Jessica, if you can provide those rights. I see the display setting and I can click on it. Okay. And I, do I stop sharing? No. Okay. Um, you want to like remote in, Naomi? Yes. Okay. Here we go. We're almost there. We're almost there. Thanks for your patience, everyone. <laughs> so, Robin, you should see. Yeah. Good. Good. Sorry. Okay. All right. There we go. Great. So, could you can you go back a couple slides? I'll just pick up real quick. Is that forward or backward? That seems to be forward. There. Which one do you want? The keep going. That one, right there. Okay. So I just wanted to point out okay. um, the summer that this is important. So. The summer of 2020, when we had to roll out the online orientation, we had 143 participants in that online orientation. When we came full circle to fall or the next fall, we had 670 and then the 212 and then the 236. And then in summer of 2021, um, we had 280. So we doubled our participation, which we felt was really a, a sign that it was really starting to take off and a sign that the different departments around the college were doing their job by you know, encouraging students to do this online orientation. And we feel like it's a, a good product and it's a good general broad orientation. So we'll go to the next slide. Yep, there's just a little delay. And then the next slide after that. Sure. It's just really slow. It's going backwards, but go there, ahead. There we go. So the survey that we, I'm gonna show you the survey results from the summer because they're very consistent with all of the survey results that we got since the beginning um, with the online orientation. So you can see that when we asked students, um, they stated the majority felt that they were very prepared or somewhat prepared um, for college. Um, after participating in the online orientation and 70% thought it was true that orientation helped ease anxiety about transitioning into college. And next slide. And then this was very key. The most students thought it was true that orientation taught them ways to get involved in campus life. And again, I'm a huge proponent of engagement. Um, and we're seeing now in many studies that engagement has a lot to do with career readiness and developing traits um, with leadership opportunities and things like that, um, that that employers want. So we'll go to the next slide. And the majority of students agreed that they knew how to make an appointment. So this right here is sort of the prize because if there's one thing we want to do with our new students is we want them to know how to make an appointment. Next slide. And most students agreed that online new student orientation met their expectations. So we were pretty happy about that. And then when we're gonna look at some of the retention data on this slide right here. So institutional research had began tracking and following the students to see how they persisted and if we had a, an impact on retention. Now we know that it's not cause and effect with orientation. We can't prove that, but we can certainly, you know, say there's a correlation there. And so we're seeing some very encouraging results. Students who participated in the new student orientation were found to be more likely to be successful in their 
first quarter of college and more likely to re-enroll for subsequent quarters. New student orientation also facilitated their social and academic integration into the institution. So when we look at the persistence and retention and do some analysis, we do see that 19% didn't return um, for a subsequent, subsequent quarter, but this is pretty good compared to the 40% of new fall entering students who are not in high school over the last five years. About 52% enrolled in the fall or winter terms in the subsequent year, which is higher than the college overall, which was typically around 42%. And I believe it's still hovering um, the general retention um, in that area fall to fall. So uh, we're able to even see success in students and groups of color that persist at a higher rate. So that's very exciting. So we know though that we still probably are not reaching the subpopulations as we should. So we'll go to the next slide. Back one slide. So we're really now at a point where, okay, we're getting through this pandemic and restrictions are lifting and we're starting to talk now about going back to face-to-face -face orientations. Um, we had talked about doing some live options like a Zoom format orientation that mimics the um, PowerPoint presentation or closely follows our online orientation that students would have an option. They could do the online orientation or they could do the Zoom style and talk to someone live and be able to answer real questions. But we really have decided we need to think more strategically about how we're using our resources and not duplicating efforts. So we have also a bridge program, a transition bridge for students who need a deeper dive into technology of using computer rich classes and remote learning. So we have the bridge and we also have some welcome sessions that our enrollment services area is doing for prospective and new students. So we are really thinking strategically and trying to use our resources wisely. I think we're kind of in a little bit of limbo right now because we're coming to the conclusion that we really want two options. We really want either the face-to-face -face large group format or the online. So we are going to promote our online orientation as one general overall orientation to encourage all students to do the online orientation. And then we need to examine and meet the needs of the students who are not getting the information that they need. That is really where we need to focus our efforts. So yeah. that, that, go ahead, Corey. Oh yeah, I was just gonna add, you know, in regards to those kind of transitions, I had a question in the chat ask us, do we mandate or require students to attend when we were on campus uh, those orientations and we did not and so you know it was this also great idea to have an online orientation um, for those that you know maybe are coming from a distance especially at metro we had a lot of online students but on the vice versa side of that having on campus ones was really important for students that may not have those that laptop at home to zoom into um, and so keeping those um, options open for our student body as we are returning to campus um, full time here actually on August 2nd for a lot of us, um, you know, we, we want to continue to offer those on campus opportunities for students because, you know, even watching that video earlier for those of you that have participated in, you know, orientations, it's, it's such a rush of energy to be with students while they're you know, in that anxious, nervous stage, but also there, they're showing up, right? I mean, they, they could choose not to be there and they chose to be there. Um, but having this online orientation, you know, really accessible whenever they want on a phone, on a tablet is, is, is also a really big benefit for accessibility. Um, and so I think as we continue down that, we're gonna have a little bit of both of these, um, but as Robin says, we're really gonna push that, um, the online orientation in case anyone cannot make it to campus um, or whether that's for transportation issues or, um, or just, you know, distance in general, um, and we'll give them that other option too. So both should be covering a lot of those bases. So again, as we wind up our session, um, you know, I, I just want to reiterate that this was just a really fun and, um, you know, amazing project to be involved in, but we made some realizations 
And I think, you know, one big realization is that it's more than just a big event. Like it's more than just the happiness and joy of putting on this big event. It really has to be strategic and has to um, meet the needs of students. And I think um, as we move forward in the future, and we'll go to the next slide there, um, we, we will, you know, we're seeing light at the end of the tunnel, but um, we really need to focus on special students and special needs like students who have food insecurity. That's something that is a reoccurring theme in surveys um, and then students who have housing insecurity and how are those students doing? You know, what do we need to do for them? So we can, as Corey said, we can push the students to the online orientation. It's a good product. It's got a very good broad overview and we need to make sure it's updated and we need to check it constantly and, and you know, make those modifications. And that online orientation uses an application called Storyboard, which our, um, our uh, IT, IDS department helped us with. And it's it's really an amazing um, application. It was very helpful um, to do that. And I got to learn a lot about it. But the videos under those tabs are really what make the difference. Those are actual staff members talking to students. And there's a student panel in there where they get to listen to students. But they don't have to watch every single tab. There's a survey at the end of it. And at the end, they get the chance to print off a certificate that says they completed new student orientation. So it was, uh, it's been definitely um, ups and downs, um, but I think we've seen some success and we have a new student orientation that's consistent now. So that's good. Corey, do you have any final thoughts? Uh, you know, I think, I think it's just this adaptability. Since we've been here, like I said, starting formalizing this, let's really in start of 2017 with the navigators coming into that orientation, really be given a little bit more of, you know, the focus of that. Um, the evolution has been great. Um, and um, I, we are getting a few questions to Robin in the chat now too, that I, I wouldn't mind answering. Um, yes, I can, I can share the, the questions. We're getting some questions. Um, do students have a scheduled classes before NSO or is advising and scheduling a part of NSO? That's, that's a fantastic question. So all of the students that would attend our previously on campus orientations had already met with a navigator, most likely in a one-on-one -on -one situation, whether that was also a walk-in, a phone appointment, or an actual appointment that they also walked in. So the orientation really acted less as a registration event and much more as a uh, encapsulating those first steps you need to uh, become a student and be successful. So that was like the getting the IDs, we have a pass to class for those that needed bus passes with our Omaha Metro bus system would be completely free for them. Um, it was also then really showing them where all those resources were on campus. So it took a lot of time, you know, to really hone down what that material was that we really wanted to focus because I think as we all know, there's a lot of information with college. And so it can be almost too overwhelming to just throw the book at someone right away. We had to really pare down what is the most important information a new student coming into Metro needs to know. So registration would have taken a lot more time and more, a little bit more individualized. So we left that to, to the one-on-one -on -one appointments where they had already met me for an hour. So when they came back to see me again, they saw me, but they also saw me with my coworkers. So they knew that Sabrina, or they knew that Claudia, or they knew that Stacy was, you know, another face that was also in the same role, um, but also saw us in a team format. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's how we were running it. So not registration, but more just like a review of resources, kind of getting a little bit of uh, a checklist done before school starts. So thank you for that question, Andrea. All right, we have another question. Um, are you tracking the effects of attending and not attending the NSO versus the success levels in the academic outcome? It would be interesting to see the results. Yes, we're, we're able to actually track who has attended new student orientation. So when the students complete the online version, then we get a notification to register them for the new student orientation. So then later we can pull up that data. And so now we're getting to a point where we've been doing it long enough that we can compare fall to fall and winter to winter and spring to spring and so forth. So we're excited to start seeing that data. 
And then there's another question about resident housing. Does MCC have on campus resident housing for students? No, we do not. We're a commuter college, um, so we do not have housing. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe you would want to share how when we've had on campus orientations, it was not just one day. It was multiple days, multiple locations. Oh, right. yes. Okay. So we designed an event that was about two hours long for a face-to-face -face event. And so we would offer it, say, at our SARPI center on an evening. And then maybe the, you know, the next day it would be at Fort in the morning. And then the next day it would be in the afternoon at Elkhorn Valley. And we just did that. And that fall that we rolled out the big um, orientation, we had 15 sections of that. So 15 different opportunities for students to pick from. And I think we're also um, coming to the conclusion that less is more. So if we just had, say, one evening session in August, you know, face to face, and then the next week a morning, and then the next week an afternoon, and do it that way, that way we might be able to get people to come to those. So we don't have to, you know, it's not like we're trying to um, herd cats, so to speak we can uh, reach more people with less resources. That's our goal. Does that answer right. the question? I hope that answers the question. It wasn't a multiple day event that students would attend multiple days. It was just, they would go one time. And it was more like the first hour was them in a, in a kind of a room, a lecture more, if you will. But that's when we had our student panel where they'd be able to ask questions. And then we would break out for that second hour generally onto the campus to go highlight the different areas that we were talking about before. So uh, we wanted to point out the learning and tutoring center, the writing center, the math center, um, where they can find a printer, where they can check out a laptop. Um, we wanted them to get their physical ID that day because sure you all have experience with students maybe not realizing they have a student ID number or not knowing where to find it. So getting that, you know, very tangible, this is yours um, and this is this is your information was very important for us to connect, not just not just the PowerPoint, but connect it to the building we were literally in at that time. Okay, great. And we have a member of MCC's contact center who would be interested in having an email template or the link, the link yep. of the NSO, so that way um, contact center can share as they register new students. Yeah, it's actually um, really easy to find. If you just go to student tools and resources off of our homepage, um, it has its own blue box, just like all the other departments do. It says M MCC orientation and anybody can access it. Thank you. And thank you, Sheila, for just sending in the link. That's very helpful. Thank you. Yes. We have a few minutes more that we can um, take questions or comments. And I would also be interested to hear from other schools who are on here um, if they have any highlights or really like promising practices that they've instituted during the pandemic and how they're coming out of it, um, I would be, I'd be happy to hear. That might be a lot to type in. So if you wanted to just say, I would like to unmute, that would, that would be fine. Um, I'm sure Robin and Corey would be very happy to hear other ideas. Absolutely, yes. And it's okay if you're shy too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, if we don't have any more um, questions at this time, um, I would like to offer Corey or Robin any last, um, last parting words before we wrap up. I think for me, the highlight of, and the biggest takeaway when it comes to orientation is that it brought a lot of departments together. A lot of facets of the college had to, had to come together and work together. 
um, and not become siloed. And I think sometimes at higher education, it's very tempting to be siloed in your own area and, and not know what is necessarily going around everywhere else. And I think that was a big collaborative effort for MCC internally to do. Um, but I think externally, it really benefited the students to see how connected we all are and how we can work together. And while we might have specific roles and may not always be able to answer that specific question, we're going to make sure that we point you into the right direction to the person that will. Um, and, and that that is a collaborative process from the beginning to the end of a student's stay with us. So I think that's what our orientation has, has really tried to do um, and, I, and hope is accomplished. And I'm looking forward to continuing um, to do them in the future. And I'll just piggyback on what Corey said. I'm very excited to see where we're going to go from here and how we're going to address those special populations. And you know, I hope that we can get back to doing some face-to-face -face large groups. I think that'll be very exciting. So we have a great year ahead of us. So we, we're, we're not done. We're, we're still forming and storming and um, creating you know, what's best for students. Fabulous. Well, I want to thank everybody who participated. Oh, here's one more question. For schools that only have an online orientation option, what type of breakout session topic ideas should we include? For only an online orientation, is yes. that a live experience, I'm thinking? Um, yes. Yes. So I think anytime um, the new students can hear from students that have already been at the college for a while or students, particularly students that come from an honor society or have, who have taken advantage of leadership opportunities. So one thing that we do at Metro is we have our students who are heavily involved in leadership programs that we offer. We kind of pick them out, you know, and say, hey, will you serve on this panel? And so that they can um, really give students their experience and what has helped them in their academics. Also breakout sessions um, that have faculty there. So we had panel on our online um, orientation. Now that's not a live experience, you know, it's self-directed, but they can click on a panel and see a faculty member, you know, talking with students about what it's like to take an online class. You know, students, they're still students who, want to know what is that like? You know, they aren't maybe sure that they want to take an online class, but they get the chance to hear from other students. So, um, and students who are involved in clubs and organizations, they like to do that. And the Resources Learning and Tutoring Center is always, you know, very beneficial. One of the things that came out really high on our survey was we asked a question, what resources did you learn about during this online orientation that you find will be most useful, really high on that um, was reported the tutoring, 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 in addition to bookstore. Um, students want to know how to get their books online. But yeah, hopefully that answered your question. <laughs> right, thank you, great insight. More involvement, engagement, those are all going to help students connect and feel a sense of belonging at the college, uh, even if they're not physically there. Thank you. So again, thank you all for participating, joining in. I would like to give a special warm thanks to Robin and Corey and Jessica for our Zoom facilitating. Um, we have coming up a continuation of talking about the needs of our students. Dr. Jennifer King will be talking about how we move beyond and help those students, per perhaps in those special student populations, get them the, the resources they need. And that will start at 11 o'clock and we will all join in in a big group online. So I will see you then. Enjoy. Thank Take care, you, everybody. everybody. Thanks you.